Razor, I don't know who the watermelon brain is that designed this thing, but you should give them a raise immediately. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, my name is Reese Four Piece from KFC or Wiki Triple XL. And this is the most intelligent keyboard design ever in the history of man, pretty much, just because of the keycap. Also, the layout's really nice. Also, this is probably the best palm rest I've ever used. This is the Bugatti Chiron of keyboards, if you will. It does come with a similar kind of price attached to it, but it's like uh, complaining about going to a specialist at 900 rand an hour after they've studied for 10 years. This falls into the same caveat as that. But before we get into the very, very clever switch, let's talk about the keyboard because it's still a default 104 key sort of layout keyboard. And when I say default because the layout is default and that's where the default effectively ends. The keycaps are incredibly high quality double shot PBTs with like a really nice textured feel to it, which is going to pick up oil just a little bit less. The keyboard itself is made from very, very high quality plastic. None of the uh, reject plastic surgery plastic that you find outside the back of a shop fallen off the back of a truck. Most of the little add-ons from Razer are in the function keys world. There's not really that much to talk about. It's sort of a default setup these days of what they have included on the function keys but they have created dedicated media keys, which I'm a huge fan of, especially when you have all of this real estate above the numpad, which is exactly what they've used it for. There's a play slash pause button, a forward skip and a back skip, and then the volume slider is actually rotational. It actually rotates uh, around in a circle and it's completely unhinged. It can rotate infinitely. And then inside of that is actually the mute button. And these are some of the most satisfying buttons ever. They've got very short travel, but very, very good tactile feedback. And that brings me pretty much the only correction you're going to see me or the only thing that I would change on this entire keyboard as it stands is that these were clear and then backlit because in the dark I was sitting there struggling going which is which. I'm just going to push everything and hope for the best. Then we get to the bottom of the keyboard which has literally the best palm rest I've ever used. It is so cushiony and so spongy and so comfortable. I could feel it healing my carpal tunnel. Not really, that's a joke, but more or less, all right. And then it's got like an LED beam. You'll see it running through the bottom over here. And in the middle, I, when I took it out, I actually couldn't believe it. I saw the connections in the middle and I was like, no ways. No ways that this thing lights up or it's got something connected to it. And when I first plugged it in, I was like, man, this doesn't seem to be anything. And then I noticed the mood lighting coming out around the bottom of the keyboard, which is really nice actually on your table, especially at night. Like these aren't the brightest LEDs I've ever seen in my life, but they're more than capable at night. And this ring that goes around the keyboard, it's just, it looks really uh, on the desk. Connectivity at first struck me as a bit weird, but then I saw everything that was going on with this keyboard and I was kind of like, maybe it's, not enough. There's a USB 3.0 and a USB Type-C and if you plug that USB 3.0 into anything that's not a USB 3.0, the software will bleat at you and tell you, you better plug that into a 3.0 because there's a pass-through on the side actually of this keyboard so you can connect USB devices in directly on the left hand side over here, nothing on the right. Uh, I think it may have been better to put it on the right hand side. I don't know. Well, well uh, if you're a lefty, maybe this is better for you. If you want something connected there to run around the back out of the way, then I suppose it's actually worse for a lefty, but it's nice that it's there. It's nice that there is an option for it. And the cabling itself is, well, this viciously uh, done braiding. It's, it's not very flexible, but you could probably swing the keyboard by it and not have to worry. Then around the back and on the underside, you'll find two layers of kickstand. So you can have it at like three degrees or seven. I'll put up the exact measurements there, but I prefer a very tilted up keyboard and the max height on this is extremely, extremely satisfying. Nice rubberizing around the base of it as well. So it's not gonna go anywhere. Not that it could because it does weigh like as much as a small Jeep. But now we get to the most important part, performance, how this keycap works, and why I'm actually like, this is the biggest brain thing I've ever seen done with a key. So they're mechanical switches, right? Well, they're analog switches, like a kind of mechanical, very, very linear sort of feedback on a weird hinge and everything that it's got going on here. But 
it's what it actually does. This has extremely, extremely long travel for a normal key. Uh, as you can see about me just pressing the escape key here, it, it goes on forever, this key. And that's actually very important for what they're trying to set up here. Now the key activates, its first activation point is less than a millimeter into the key travel. So literally as you push into it, as soon as that thing starts moving, it, it starts its activation. But it's got multiple layers of activation in it. So it's both, get this, a trigger, like the trigger you find in the front of an Xbox controller and a normal keyboard all in one keycap. So if you're typing, you get that instant feedback. But if you're playing a racing game, like I'll show you now and maybe towards, well, I will show you towards the end of the video, I'll put in my full run, um, which you can watch from the third person perspective because it's a lot more fun than watching it from the first person perspective, which is because I've tuned the difficulty setting basically to the highest you can get it and then still beat the computer by like 13 seconds on a normal run, um, as you'll see in that video. Uh, th this thing, I, I actually, got slightly better because of the way these keys work. Okay, so back to the point. So when you turn, okay, you can depress it slightly for a little bit of wheel or more to lock in. Now, when I've been playing on keyboard, I'm obviously used to, as soon as I've activated, it goes into full lock. This had like an almost inherent delay with that. So I had to set up for corners and stuff just a little bit earlier, but because I could more accurately apply small steering inputs and stuff with the keyboard but just just touching it or or apply throttle and brake just a little bit with a little bit more finesse i actually ended up speeding up and going really 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 fast and very very clean as well so the bullet point of the presentation though is if you're playing like fps or something you have activation probably one of the shallowest activation points for a key ever and then if you're playing a racing game you've got a trigger and that can be applied on every single key on this keyboard. You can also remap every single key on this keyboard because Razer, and then they've got their own shift kind of, or, or Razer shift technology where on holding in shift, you can then program every other key on the keyboard. Lighting is extremely well done. Again, it's normal Razer Chroma stuff that I've come to expect from doing everything from their Huntsman Mini all the way through to their, you know, uh, mice and now this keyboard the Chroma experience, the software experience in Razer is still very premium. And now it's got some takeover mode. So when I'm in Opera GX, for instance, when I open up a new tab, it swipes a new tab across the keyboard, which is like nice little touches and stuff in games, which I always nerd out over a little bit and like a lot. But this keyboard is so big brain. Okay, I, I actually, I can't express how clever I, I find this, to be honest with you. I'm a person that really enjoys like my, my, my two best things are extreme value and innovation and they're basically on the same kind of level so i enjoy everything that mclaren's put into the center as much as i enjoy the new m3 having a six pattern h style gearbox they both are like really cool ways of going about things and in the peripheral space this has been just a advancing Kind of trend and this just takes it over to another level you can have the best pc in the world and still have a bad time because your peripherals are limiting your experience if razor made this in a tkl i would sell a kidney to buy one i would have to because razor please just just a little just a little less premium i know you guys are like ferrari you know you want to be the premium i get that but please make this with this switch in a TKL with the same wrist rest, just do everything, just make it that big. And you've got a client for life because of the switch and how it works. It's so clever. I am literally a group of teenage girls walking in odd numbers because I can't even. This is unequivocally the best keyboard ever made. The way the switch works, just, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, I can't even. I'm just gonna walk away because Razer, just, just get out of here. In conclusion, my mind has been blown, like straight out of the building and this is the coolest peripheral i've tested pretty much ever in my life thank you razor i appreciate you if you want to send over stuff like this anytime you could literally charge ten thousand rand for this keyboard okay maybe not four thousand rand is already it's getting there but you could you could because this is so clever just good job man good job i'm so proud of you also they've moved the activation or the notification lights over here to the bottom over here and also I'm just noticing that this has a completely flat aluminium deck, it does, um, and uh, it's not all plastic, 
and uh, also the light beam at the back seems to be deactivated for like default reasons of you probably won't see it um, and uh, yeah if you were thinking of getting one of these for whatever reason knock yourself out you're gonna have a really good time anyway that's all i have for you in this review if you have enjoyed it please hit us up with a like and subscribe and i will see you on the flip side Oh, my God.